Okay, here I'm talking about the monopoly model. And to begin with, let's compare that to a perfectly competitive market model. Um, this is the model that the textbook has been using. And of course we have inputs X1 and X2, which might be labor and capital. Um, what makes this a perfectly competitive market is the fact that price is exogenous. The firms are just price takers. They have to look at what is the market price for my particular product. Um, the market determines that they have no influence over that and they take that to be exogenous. Now with the monopoly model it's going to be the exact opposite. The firm is going to actually influence the price. So we have a number of different ways of setting up a monopoly model and the first um, most classic version is to let the firm choose quantity and then the price will be determined by the quantity they choose. So um, this is going to be a classic uh, monopoly model. Of course, all profit um, functions are going to be revenue minus total cost. So firm is choosing quantity. Um, they have revenue, which is a function of qu the quantity they choose, minus cost, which is a function of the quantity they choose. And of course, we had the same revenue uh, thing up here. We had revenue was price times quantity, and cost was just um, the uh, price of each input times the quantity of each input. Here costs are just going to depend on the quantity we produce. So this is a very simple model. Now the textbook for whatever reason uses Y for quantity. So this is the textbook's version of the same thing. Revenue is a, as a function of output. And output of course is quantity. Minus cost as a function of quantity. And of course we take the first order conditions of that and that gives us the derivative of the payoff function with respect to output or quantity. Um, that gives us the derivative of the revenue function with respect to quantity minus the derivative of the cost function with respect to quantity equals zero. And of course, this revenue function is going to be uh, marginal revenue. And this cost thing over here is marginal cost. And so, of course, you, you take the marginal cost to the other side of the equation. You get marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So that's what's going to pop out of our monopoly model. Okay, so now I'd like to connect this with a graphical version of the monopoly model. And the, we've got up here a demand curve. And that demand curve is linear and is given to us by this particular equation. Price equals 600 minus 2Q. So of course there's an intercept, which in this case is 600, and there's a slope associated with this demand curve, which I'll label in red, so the slope is going to be negative 2. And this firm, we have a cost of $12 per unit, so this is a very simple firm that has just a certain amount of inputs and for everything they produce they just need to pay a fixed amount for those inputs and that cost is going to be given by twelve dollars so we'll put our marginal cost onto this graph marginal cost of twelve dollars now we know the optimal quantity to choose is going to be the quantity such that marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Now we already know our marginal cost and we've already got it graphed on that graph. The question is, can we come up with a marginal revenue based on just this information? And I encourage you to stop the video and test to see if you can come up with a total revenue curve based on this information. And of course, if you come up with a total revenue curve, um, you can just take the derivative to find the marginal revenue. So see if you can come up with total revenue for this firm. All right, so um, the total revenue is going to be equal to price times quantity. And the price is given to us by our demand function. So total revenue is going to be 600 minus 2Q, 600 minus 2Q, times quantity, price times quantity for the firm. So 600Q minus 2Q squared is our total revenue. So our marginal revenue is going to be the derivative of that with respect to Q. So marginal revenue is going to be 600 minus 
4q, just taking the derivative. Um, and of course, we can find the optimal quantity by setting marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. That's how we find our optimal quantity. So we know that um, marginal revenue equals marginal cost is 12 dollars. $12. And by solving this, we're going to get Q star. So, uh, so we've found our optimal quantity. Now let's graph all of the stuff we just did. So we already had our marginal cost curve graphed up here. Let's see if we can graph our marginal revenue curve. Marginal revenue curve is going to be this function, which was the derivative of the total revenue, which was derived from price times quantity. And we see that it also has an intercept of 600, so it has the same intercept as the demand curve in a linear case, but the slope is twice as steep. And you'll actually notice that's a pattern you're gonna find whenever you have a linear demand curve, that the marginal revenue curve is going to be twice as steep. It has a slope that's two times the slope of the demand curve. So slope negative four. And that's our marginal revenue curve. And we solved to find where marginal cost equaled marginal re revenue. That gave us our optimal quantity. Can we find that optimal quantity on the graph? Well, here we have marginal cost. Here we have marginal revenue. Where those two meet, we have our optimal quantity, Q star. And so what is our optimal price? Well, our optimal price is at that optimal quantity. It's going to be the price on the demand curve. We know that when we came up with total revenue, our price we used was as high as we could set it at that particular quantity. So the highest price that the firm can charge at this quantity is going to be up on the demand curve. So this is our P star. P star. And we get our P star by plugging our optimal quantity into our demand function. So 600 minus 2 times the optimal quantity, which we've decided is 147. And we can do the math, and this will give us an optimal price of um, $306. So 306 equals the optimal price. Um, so now we've solved a monopoly model for the optimal quantity and the optimal price. No, we don't even have any first order conditions up here. So let's do the same thing again, just taking the first order conditions and let's see if it gives us the same answer. Okay, so we'll set up our optimization problem. So we're maximizing by choosing Q to come up with Q star. And we're maximizing um, price times quantity. So price is given to us by our demand function. 600 minus 2q times quantity, so price times quantity, minus our total costs, and our total costs are just $12 per unit times the quantity of units we choose to produce. So we can uh, simplify this um, by distributing. And I could simplify that even further, but I'll just leave it like this, um, just to make the point when we take our first order conditions, we take the derivative of the payoff function, profit function for the firm, with respect to Q, our choice variable, and we get 600 minus 4Q minus 12 equals zero. And of course, when we look at that, we have our marginal revenue, pops out of this, and our marginal cost. And those functions up here, our marginal revenue appears up here. Our marginal cost curve is right there. So marginal revenue equals marginal cost pops out of our first order condition. So it's no surprise when we do the algebra for this that we get the optimal Q star is equal to the same thing it was before, which is 147. Um, and of course, we get our optimal price the same way we got it before by plugging it into the demand curve, um, which is going to give us the same price we had before, which is 306. 
So this works whether you do the first order condition, which is maybe even the easier way if you've learned to do a first order condition well, but we also know that you can do it without a first order condition just by knowing that marginal cost equals marginal revenue and by, e by deriving it that way. And we know that all of that maps nicely onto this um, monopoly model with a profit maximization graph.